Internal audit. One of the crucial factors in question seems to be what sort of business needs an internal audit. Clearly small and medium enterprises are less likely to need an internal audit than large businesses. Large, diverse and complex. Large meaning a large number of employees. Diverse may be geographically diverse, complex, complex product structure. What you also need to look at is what would the benefits of having an internal audit, internal audit being the check-in of the internal control systems, what would the benefits of that be and would it outweigh the costs that are going to come with it? If the organisation is changing, if it's changing its geographical structure, its product structure, whatever it might be, then the internal controls may not be designed in order to deal with this change. So an internal audit could come and show that. Also, if there's been a change in the risks, so if there's a new competitor or a new market, again, internal audit could help to see whether the internal controls can manage as, re as adapted to the change. If there's been internal control problems or a number of unexplained events, then you need to check, are the internal controls working? And so an internal audit would help with that. How does the internal control then, how does it underpin, how does it help internal controls? Well, it ensures that it's capable. I use the example of my email recaps that I send to students. And what I could do is I could have an audit about does this email recap work? Some, some are effective, some are read and people understand, and some not so much. So I would do an audit on that. I would look at the ones that are opened more, I would look at the ones that people have spent longer on, and I would think about the design, what worked and how made it effective. So the internal audit can help to ensure that the control itself is a good control. Again, me looking at the reports is like doing a follow-up visit. Internal control on its own is not enough. It needs to be a sound system, a system that reports and a system that the weaknesses are followed up, so follow-up visits. Obviously then it will look at the completeness and accuracy, accuracy being an important part of internal control. It will just look at the completeness and accuracy of reports, have a look at variances, so the internal controls keep throwing up these variances. You then audit whether these variances are going beyond standards or not, particularly important uh, on safety and environment, etc. And similarly, the external compliance, the internal auditor can check that the internal controls are ensuring that we are still compliant with the industry that we're in. Auditor independence tends to be well answered by students because of your knowledge from F8. But significant fees, whether they be audit or non-audit, that could be a threat to the independents because they don't want to lose the money. If they're involved in the management accounting or something, then they won't want to review or they will want to review their own work, but obviously lose independence. If they're intimidated by strong management or if they're too familiar through long service. The audit committee. The audit committee should be entirely non-executive, entirely independent, because they have to look at, they have to oversee, assess and review the internal controls and the internal audit. So the internal controls and the internal audit, make, you don't want the management to override them, you don't want um, people to be able to collude, and so therefore having an independent check on this is vital. Audit committee for the inside, for the internal audits, well, they monitor and assess them, they ensure the recommendations are acted on, they review their work plan, they appoint the, the head of the internal audit and make sure that the internal audit, again, aren't intimidated, preserve their independence. Again, you have to have a look at the external audit and how, that, how it helps. Well, oversee the auditor's relationship with the company, recommend auditors to the board, check their selection, make sure they're independent, help with their work plan and make sure that any recommendations are acted upon, the post-completion review.